basically normal distributions um, with this emphasis on the 68, 99.7 rule and how that applies to normal distributions. I'm also going to throw in um, a little tutorial on how to create a histogram in um, a, a spreadsheet program like Excel for Windows or Pages for the Mac. Um, the first thing I want to call your attention to, um, this is basically a, a, a snapshot of the adult, of the heights that we took from our class. Um, this has 32 pieces of data that represent the heights of all 32 people in our class. If you, just for example, if I try to take this data and I say, okay, let's make a chart, I'll click my chart icon and I'll say, let's make a what they call bar chart. And in fact, it really is a bar chart. Well, if you look at this bar chart, it's, it's not what I want, obviously. Um, I'm like, okay, well, let me switch the axes and maybe that'll make it better. And then it's like, okay, that's, that's worse. And the reason it's doing this is because it doesn't understand that each of these data points are describing the same variable height. It thinks because you have them in different columns that they're actually different variables. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight each one. I'm going to drag and just place them all in the same column. Some of you that maybe are more advanced at uh, Excel may know how a quicker way to do this, but uh, Okay, so I've, I've migrated over to Excel um, just to kind of, I think probably more people would be familiar with that or have that on their laptops uh, from school or maybe even at home. So what I've done was I've put these, actually I've put them in a row or actually a column, but then I also put them in order numerically. And the way that you can do that, you can um, find the sort button, sort A to Z or sort Z to A, just sort ascending or descending. Um, and you can, I believe it's up in data, you can have several places, uh, sort is right here. So go ahead and highlight all the numbers that you want to sort, and you can click, else if I click sort Z to A, then it flips it upside down. If I click A to Z, then it puts it in numerical order, smallest to largest, and that's what I want. Okay, so we saw what happened if you tried to create, a, a, I guess, a histogram from that. It really kind of considers it categorical data and it tries to put it into groups based on how you've got them highlighted. If we did this one, it would give me one bar and it would just have a whole bunch of numbers in it which wouldn't really mean anything. Okay, I've also calculated the mean and standard deviation of my distribution. Um, that's going to be useful when I go to create my normal distribution using the 68, 95, 99.7. Um, in order to find those values in this average or standard deviation, if you'll highlight, well actually if you just click on a space and go up and look for your formula button and you can click average and what it'll do is it'll choose some boxes for a second. No, that's not the boxes I want. Go over and make sure that you highlight all of the boxes that you want and then you hit enter and then it'll give you the average. Now I've rounded mine to two decimal places instead of three. Um, if we want to do this again, um, with standard deviation, what we can do is the same process. I'll go down, standard deviation is not there, so I'll click more functions and it's going to bring it up. Okay, I, I really want standard deviation. If you want to look for it, just type in standard deviation. It should come up. Um, because I've used it in the, pre in the past, previously, um, it's already here for me. So I'll click that and I'll double click it. Here again, it's asking, okay, well, what, what cells do you want to use? So I would highlight all of those. And then I'll just hit enter, and there we have my standard deviation. Here again, that's a lot of decimals, and I don't need that many, so I've rounded to those values. And the way that you can change the setup, if you go over to your, I think on Windows, this you don't have this will be up at the top where you normally see your um, sheets. Um, well, I think you can right click on the cell itself and go down to Format Cells. And what we want to do is we want to change that to make sure it's number I don't want not using money or anything else not time um, I have two decimal places selected instead of three or four or however many it has could have float there but I chose two decimal places because that makes it a lot easier to, to work with and I clicked OK and I do that for each cell that I want to modify 
Okay, so next thing we want to do is we want to decide on our class width. Well, I have a minimum of 60 and a maximum of 73. Um, choosing a class width of something like 5 would not be really beneficial because that would give me basically three bars. Um, I could do a class width as small as 1. That, that wouldn't be bad, actually. Um, it would give you quite a few, 13 bars, and some you would have lots of spaces because we don't have all the numbers. So I'm going to create one with a class width of 2. So what I'm going to do next is is create. I'm just going to go down the list, and I'm going to type in the class widths, and then I'm going to count how many numbers fall into that, that range, and I'm going to use that as my frequency. And then I'll be able to be ready to create a, a histogram. So we can see here, now we have our classes and we have our frequencies. Okay, The frequency is simply how many numbers fell into each category. And, and, and you can begin to think about how we're going to use frequency and the classes to create our histogram now. Now we have some values that we can highlight. We're really, the, the computer is going to think this is a category. It doesn't think it's a number right now because there is no number 60-61. That doesn't make any sense to the computer. So when we go to create our chart, we'll click on charts, and we'll look for a bar chart, and we'll have our bar chart created. We'll look at it here. And so you can see this is relatively a nice histogram, although it's not technically accurate. There is spaces that really shouldn't be there. Um, and it's not entirely accurate, but if you wanted to create a representation of a histogram in Excel, this is about as easy as you can make it. There are other ways to make this a little bit more accurate, but I don't think that's really necessary for what we're talking about. We really would like to have a quick way of, of looking at data and extracting out certain information and just try to analyze what we see. So if we actually do look at this data, is it normal? Um, I would say not entirely normal. Um, we already knew that this was going to be slightly skewed to the smaller, to the shorter things. Um, most of the data is from women, um, although women can be tall. Um, on average, uh, men are taller than women, and statistics talks about what happens most of the time. What's, what's the average? What's, the, um, what's expected? And so when you look at this, if we were to draw a kind of a curve over the top of it, it does kind of look a little bell-shaped, and, and that's not unusual. However, um, if we were to lop off this, these three data points, or these four data points here, um, then it definitely looks heavily skewed to the left side. Um, it's just a sharp drop-off at this point. Okay, and we only have 32, and it's not entirely a representative of our population because it's all women, mostly women. But let's try to apply the 68, 95, 99.7 rule to this scenario. Okay, and I've already got something drawn up just to kind of look at it, and I'll explain what this is. So let's see. Pull this back over, or maybe not. Did I mention Excel is not my favorite program? Get my hand. All right, let's go back to our graph. Okay, good. Let's go up a little bit. We'll place this right under my graph. Okay, so let's just suppose that my graph was kind of normal. What you see at the bottom down here we have our mean, which was 65.13. You can see that here. And I've taken the mean, and I've added one standard deviation here, 
I've added two standard deviations, and then I added three standard deviations to get the three values that you see above your mean here. All right, and just the same, I subtracted the standard deviation, 3.33, from my mean to get the three lower values. Okay, once I've done that, it gives me some cutoff marks, and we've discussed this in class by now. These are how you find out what deviations or what whole standard deviations away from your mean are going to be div divided up into. If you see the, the blue horizontal bar here, that is the two standard deviations away from the mean that I expect to see. Um, we would expect, you can see the expected situation on the left side, we expect about 22 people to fall within that group. Now I know my numbers don't line up with my, with my graph, but we have about 26 people, or 81%, fall within 60, really 62 inches, all the way up to 68 inches. And the way I can find that out, I can go back over here, and I can just count all the way from 62 to 68, which is that many people. So we have 26 people, a little higher than I expected it to be. I expected it to be about 22. If you look at the 95 percentile, we have, not percentile, but the 95, middle 95 percent, we have 29 people fall within that group, which is fairly close. In fact, 95 percent is actually 30.4, but if you round it, it's down to 30. So that's not too bad. That's not too far off. Okay, and when you look at the next step, we we have 99.7, which is all the way from 75.12 all the way down to 55.14. Okay, that's a pretty large distance. Um, we had 100% of the people fall within that range, which makes sense. Um, and it, here again, 99.7% of 32 is actually... 31.7, but we can round, and that's uh, that's all 32 people, which this does fit. So well, you can see here, some of the data does tend to fall within the normal distribution, but you can see that the lower part, the 68%, is really off. I mean, 20, not 20, but, you know, um, 13, maybe 14% difference. That's a lot. You would expect maybe two or three percent difference and that would still be considered a normal distribution but you can see from the picture it definitely doesn't look normal okay it does look like it's skewed to one side or maybe even has a few outliers I don't know that they would be officially called an outlier but absolutely would be um, different from our group okay sorry for those of you that are in this group I don't mean to call you weird or anything um, just kidding so this is how you take data from any question, create your classes, create the frequencies for those classes, then in turn create your histogram in Excel. Hopefully you haven't tried to create histograms in Excel before now by using the bar charts because that's just frustrating and I find it rather frustrating that they don't even throw in a histogram as one of your options. It's such a common plot but anyway we also looked at your 68, 95, 98.7 part. Okay, the questions or the worksheet that I've given you for uh, for your assignment is based on um, the Olympic downhill. Um, you've got data from from that value, and it should be pretty much the same thing. Good luck.